Hello and welcome to the Warjet Waterjet 5 Axis Part from Start to Finish webinar. My name is Benji Macera, I'm the Product Manager here at Warjet, and I'm joined today by Jeff Day, our Senior Applications Engineer. Uh, we know your time is important, so we'll get right into it. So today we're going to run through the two different ways to make a 5 Axis Part from Start to Finish. Both are going to start run about the same process. Uh, start in with any sort of CAD uh, program. Doesn't have to be AutoCAD. Be anything that can export a DXF. Then I'll go into our WordCam software. We we can apply Toolpath and any sort of options we want for uh, cutting bevels or countersinks, things like that. That Jeff will show you. And then we'll bring it onto our water jet and cut it on the Apex 60 uh, mechanism. So without further ado, we'll toss it over to Jeff to do some cutting. Today I'll be walking through how to program a couple different parts in WordCam. We'll program a 2D part and use the bevel angle correction feature of the 5-axis head to achieve straighter edges. And then we'll also be cutting apart with some bevel cuts. I'll be using our Apex 60 5-axis cutting head. This cutting head is capable of cutting angles up to 60 degrees. And I'll be cutting on our X1530 water jets. This has a 5 foot by 10 foot cutting envelope or 1.5 meters by 3 meters, and we have 12 inches of z-axis travel, or 300 millimeters. So with that, let's jump into WordCam. We'll walk through how to program a 2D part now. So I've got my WordCam package open. So with this, I can open up DXF or DWG files. So this is the first file that we'll be cutting. Top right-hand corner, once I've got this open, I can hit my Next button, and I can choose my material and thickness. So we'll be doing quarter inch aluminum and then top right hand corner I can hit the fast forward button and it'll automatically add my toolpath, create my CNC file and also generate a report with estimated cutting time and you can also opt to print the estimated cost per part information down here at the bottom of this report. So with that this part's ready to go and we'll switch over to controller software and load it and cut it. Here we have our controller software. On the left we've got a listing of all the different parts that we can run. On the bottom is the part that we just created. So I've got that highlighted. We have a preview of the part. Over here on the right I can click on this load program button. And then once that's loaded over here on the right I can turn my pump on, turn my water and abrasive auto buttons on, and then we can move over into our cutting position and start the program. Cutting our first part, you'll note the Apex 60 5-axis head making small movements as it's cutting. One of the characteristics of abrasive water jet cutting is that, since it's an erosion process, the faster you go, the rougher the edge will be, and along with that, there'll also be more of a bevel angle from the top of the part to the bottom. Conversely, the slower you go, the smoother the edge will be, and it'll also become straighter. In fact, you can go so slowly that you can actually get to the point where you have a reverse bevel. For many people, they don't really need the super smooth edge that you get when you travel slowly to minimize this bevel. Since we use the same amount of abrasive per minute, whether you're at the slow end of the cut speed range or the high end, cutting slower costs more per inch. If you don't need the smooth edge, cutting slowly to minimize the bevel only eats into profit margins. So if the application allows for the rougher edge that you'll get at higher speeds, but you would still like a straighter edge, that's where a 5-axis head like the Apex 60 really shines. Because the bevel angle for any given material, thickness, and speed is fairly repeatable, with our years of testing and measuring, we've built up a material database in WordCam that can adjust the angle of the head based upon cut speed so you can minimize this bevel angle. The Apex 60 5-axis head is designed to give you excellent performance in reducing bevel and vertical cuts, and also the flexibility to cut angles up to 60 degrees. Now we'll walk through how to program a part with bevel cuts. So we'll open up this part here. And top right hand corner we'll hit our next button and we'll choose our material and thickness. Top right hand corner hit my next button again. Top left hand corner click on my auto button. This adds my toolpath for my vertical cuts. 
can do things in here like change my lead position so you can just click and change your lead positions as you want and then over here on the right we have a tool to add our bevel cuts so you can choose between top and bottom bevel cuts what angle you want to do and how far down into the part you want that bevel cut to go so first we'll do a bottom bevel and we'll turn on the whole contour because we want to go all the way around this geometry here click where I want to do my pierce and then for the other cut we'll switch to a top bevel and I'll click to put the bevel on there for the outside we'll put a 45 degree bevel cut along the top and the right edge so I turn off the whole contour button and click on top left hand corner click on the bottom right hand corner and then left click to tell it that that's the part of the cut I want to add the bevel to and that looks good so then top right hand corner hit our next button and then top left hand corner click on CNC to create our CNC file and then if you want click on the report button to generate your report so with that we'll go ahead and load and cut this one back in the controller software here's the part that we just created so highlight that click on load program and our pump is still on water and abrasive auto buttons are on so now we can just move into our next position and run this program One thing I want to touch on before we got into questions and answers, you may have seen in the bevel part that we cut the uh, height setter come down initially to establish the standoff distance. I'll just replay that portion of the video here. So we normally anticipate the uh, distance from the top of the material to the bottom of the nozzle to be 1 8 of an inch. For 2D cutting, it's not super critical that you're at that exact height. But anytime that you get into doing any sort of bevel cutting, you do want to make sure that you're as close as possible to that height, and that's what this height setter does. So basically it'll go over, touch off, establish where the top of the material is, and then bring the cutting head back down to that proper 1 8 standoff distance. So if we look at this graphically here, if we're vertical and if we move this nozzle up or down slightly from that eighth of an inch it's not going to make that big of a difference on our tolerances there'll be a slight difference as that stream is going to widen out a little bit but usually it's not that significant however if you're trying to do a 45 degree bevel cut like this and this dotted line here represents the center of your stream and the red lines are the edges of your stream if I move this nozzle up or down just slightly from that proper standoff distance then that's going to affect where that's intersecting our material and in turn affect the size of this land down here so the, uh, the height setter is a nice option if you're going to be doing a sort of a bevel cutting all right thanks for that jeff so we'll get into the q a portion of the webinar um, i had a couple questions that uh, came up here uh, specifically around ward cam james is asking does uh, ward cam also nest multiple shapes ward cam doesn't have any nesting capability it's strictly taking in the dxf file We've got a couple options for people that want nesting uh, there's a package from hypotherm pro nest lts which is a uh, dxf shape nester and then you could bring that nested sheet into WordCam. 
um, or we also offer iGEMS, which has a true shape nesting package and we'll do parts inside of parts and things like that. Excellent. So uh, the other question here is if someone has a, a material that doesn't happen to be in the uh, WordCam database or, or already programmed in there, how would they go about adding a material to the uh, to WordCam? Um, so I've got WordCam up on the screen right now. So you're going to be doing a different material. So it's the standard materials that are in our database. But if somebody comes to you with something that's not in there, uh, generally what we'll recommend is you put that piece of material up onto your table and you do some cuts at some different speeds to establish what you perceive to be the slow smooth or Q fine or smoothest speed up to the uh, the rough speed where you're barely getting through and with that you're able to kind of reverse engineer this machine ability number so any number that's greater than one it's going to cut faster than steel and if the machine ability is less than one then it's going to cut slower than steel so i can click on this add material button down here it'll make a copy of whatever that i've got in there and i can give it whatever name that I want to call it, uh, thickness, and then you can adjust this machinability number until the uh, feed rates get in line with what you saw out there on the machine in the real world. Great, um, and Jeff is asking is, uh, do you have or can you provide cutting speed charts for stainless steel and aluminum? Easiest way for that would be if you go to our website, uh, I'll just go back to homepage here. You can go, you can get to this anywhere on our website, but you go to the software tab and then you go down to feed rate calculator. You can click on this link here. You can download this feed rate calculator here. So essentially it's this just a little bit different color scheme, but in here you've got standard materials. You can choose that. You can choose your uh, thickness. Let me switch over to Imperial here. Uh, nozzle orifice combination, which is going to depend on the size pump that you choose. So over here you can choose what size uh, horsepower pump that you've got. And that'll determine how many cutting heads that you can use in conjunction with the, the nozzle orifice. And then gives you this range of cutting speeds from the slow smooth to the fast rough. This separation number up here is the theoretical absolute maximum that you might barely be able to cut through and probably need a sledgehammer to cut get it out, but this is usually the fastest that somebody might cut the material at. Then over here on the right, it's also got information as far as um, cost per inch of cutting, cost per hour and such. So quite a helpful tool. Warjet is a uh, unique manufacturers. We have a, a dedicated line of water only water jets uh, where they're specifically designed with uh, a dry tank design that uh, reduces any sort of splashback uh, from the machine and also allows uh, the design for the curve uh, material and spent water to run to a central drain point. So you can go through a paperbed filter uh, or any sort of other, you know, uh, filtration system to drain. Uh, so if you are looking at uh, cutting a large amount of foam, if that's your, your basic uh, application and you, you don't need a, abrasive in there as well, uh, looking at our water only line of water jets is uh, very beneficial because, like I said, we're the only manufacturer that is that has uh, the, the depth and breadth of lines uh, designed for whatever your throughput may, may be or what your uh, material can cut at. So that that's always a good line to look at. So um, uh, next question is, um, uh, how do I add tabs to keep the part from dropping out of the base sheet? On, um, back here on WordCam on your material database. Uh, if you click on to this leads tab here, this tab here, we specify what we're going to use for length of lead in for inside and outside cuts. And then we've also got this field up here for tab width. So in this case here, we're going to be leaving a 20 thou tab on the outside cut. Uh, and then of course that can be adjusted. You can make that a little bit larger, smaller, depending on how big or small of a tab that you want. So once you've got that set, then when I, um, go and add my tool path to the outside. We zoom in here. That gap there represents that, that uh, there's a tab there. Whereas on the inside cut, there won't be a tab. Now, if this was a very expensive material and you wanted to keep the slugs from falling into the tank, you could also tab those just like we did the outside cut. Great. And then Scott's asking, uh, how well would the height sensor or the height setter work for bevel cutting of soft foam type materials? Um, well, yeah, again, like the previous question about uh, soft goods, a little bit 
a wide universe there of materials that we can cut. So, you know, if it's a very light density, two pound foam, um, we might not be able to back off the, uh, the pressure on that enough where it's not gonna decompress the material. Doing something like a nine pound foam, probably work fine. Uh, can also adjust slightly the size of that foot to spread out the, uh, the pressure a bit on the material. So again, probably be something that we'd wanna do some tests on your specific material. And with a lot of those things, it, it really depends on application material and uh, you know how fast you're cutting as well. So, um, and then there's also you know heavy duty grades that are, are a thicker material that that stand up if you're you're cutting very thick material and you're going to have a very slow stream as well. Uh, but there's a number of different substrate options, uh, and again, that would be something when you uh, speak to one of our associates, uh, you know. Uh, to discuss on, on what kind of uh, grading or support system you would want under your machine that would work best for your application. So, um, so again, guys, thank you very, very much for, for spending time with us today. Um, uh, hopefully this was informative, answered your questions. But again, if you have some more questions, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, but with that, I want to say thank you and uh, we'll see you next time.